He moved to California and made an interesting living, getting hit by cars and suing for insurance money. I mean, motherfuckers do it every day. Hello there, love bugs. Hello there, Bellas. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, subscribe, and visit uptopbeauty.com. Today's looky looky would be our Priscilla personality glasses. This would be the number two frame. And if you are not already a part of our book club, please hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube and for a small monthly fee of $5. You babies, yes you, can be privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it, if the YouTube gets it. Now, let's talk about I'll Be There, The Four Tops by Duke Fakir. Please remember, all I wear are currently on sale at uptopbeauty.com. Thank you for all of your support. It itself. Levi was still living with me, and on the streets, he heard about a guy in Toledo, Welton E. Barnett, who was trying to put together a singing group to perform at the Woolhurst Country Club in Little John, Colorado. It seemed like a good chance to make some money, and we felt we could sing as well as anybody. So we got someone to drive us to Toledo to talk to Welton Barnett, a very intelligent guy who published a small black newspaper. Barnett was interested in us. If we agreed to back up his lead singer, some guy who had just gotten out of prison and may have been his boyfriend. Ooh, Shay, Shay. Uh, Dookie, you know that was his boyfriend. Stop it, girl. Not you, Dookie. I ain't trying to say, I just, I'm just playing. We know that you likes the women's because after all, you was a part of a gang called the Gigolos and we know that you crawled all over uh, Murray Wilson while you was the married man. This was okay with us, especially since the money was good. A couple hundred bucks each for a one-week engagement, we went back to Detroit and recruited another singer, a guy named John who worked with Jackie Wilson and had a great voice. The engagement was close to New Year's and coupled with the holiday spirit. Our expectations were high. This was our first professional job, and we were ready and excited. Barnett paid for our bus fare to Denver, and we checked into the YMCA, anxious to have our first rehearsal with x -Con, the lead singer, who was a really tall, big guy. All three of us young guys sang background. Levi did baritone. I was tenor, and John filled out the bass end of the harmony. x -Con learned two or three songs with us, one that everybody knew how to sing, but it wasn't long before Levi and I were exchanging looks. Damn! This mother hunchy ain't no good. He was too loud on one song, and on another, he was too sharp. Some of them were okay, but our general feeling was, let's just get this over with and make some money. We knew we looked sharp that night in our rented formal white jackets and black pants. When we hit the stage, we started singing Good Night, Sweetheart, Good Night, and it sounded nice. The next song was good, too. Then we launched into My Summer Is Gone, and x Con started screaming off-key. He was way over the top with no stage presence. He sounded worse than he did in rehearsal, sharp, flat, and even louder. The manager of Wilhurst Country Club stood up in the middle of the audience, stopping us after just one verse of the second song. Hold it, he shouted. Get the fuck off my stage and don't come back. Get out! 
Get out of here. Levi and I were so embarrassed, but we looked at each other and knew exactly what the other was thinking. Let's get the hell away from this motherfucker. Many years later, after the Tops began a popular center group, we ran into Welton E. Barnett again. He moved to California and made an interesting living, getting hit by cars and suing for insurance money. I mean, motherfuckers do it every day. Pause. I know you're like, Nate, why you keep telling stories? Because this book is goddamn dry. And I have to entertain y'all with these stories, okay? I hope it picks up after a while. Because you know, if these books run slow, they, we getting them out of there fast and moving to the next book, okay? And it look like, uh, Dookie! Dookie, you, you, this book is looking real dry. Okay. Look, so one time I went to Publix, right? And I was like, ooh, this couple look real funny. Oh, they looking real funny. Like the white Cephas and Reese. Uh, the lady had a cup in her hand. I don't know how, but that daggone cup spilled over. Next minute you know, the man was on his back. The people's on the ground. The woman started walking around. My husband just failed. My husband just failed. I'm like, uh, management, the husband just failed. The manager was like, we know. We on our way. Obviously, these motherfuckers didn't pull this stuff before, okay? Their picture must be all over the public's lunchroom, all right, for them to know Cephas and Reese, the white Cephas and Reese is coming to, coming to town. The lady was like, you saw it, you saw it. Lady, I can't see. What you talking about? I didn't see The shit. whole experience in Colorado seemed like a joke. After Levi and I arrived back in Detroit, it was hard to admit to our friends and family that our first professional job had been a total failure. I could never have predicted that just two weeks later, Levi and I would be invited to sing at a local graduation party. And this time we would ask two guys who could really sing to join us, Obi Benson and Lawrence Payton. I've always felt it was more than just chance that out of all the guys Levi and I knew in Detroit who dabbled in singing, we picked Lawrence and Obi. It was like tossing a handful of coins in the air and having them all come up heads. And it all started just because we were thinking about girls. Y'all, if you hear snoring or heavy breathing, it is Lulu. I'm so sorry. It seems like every time I put this computer in front of me, he want to get very clingy. It's, it's driving me nuts. So I'll be glad when he gets out of this puppy phase. I love my sweetheart, but, you know, at the same time, he does interfere with my work. At Pershing High School, there was an elite girls club called the Shaharazads. The prerequisite to membership must have been looking good and being bougie. The head girl, Joanne Artis, was throwing a graduation party in her basement before everyone went off to college in 1954. It was a special occasion by invitation only, and Joanne asked Levi and I to sing during the party. We eagerly accepted and decided to get two other guys to sing with us. For some reason, we thought a group would be better. Lawrence Payton came to mind immediately. We knew he could sing, was good at harmony, and came from a singing family. Plus, he looked great, which was mandatory since impressing the girls was essential. Levi's mother and Lawrence's family were cousins, so it was like keeping it in the family. Obi Benson, we agreed upon too. He had already graduated from high school and was messing around in other singing groups, working and trying to figure out how he was going to get to college. So we went to the party, girl hunting, and singing was the last thing on our mind. Joanne cut off the music and introduced Levi and me, telling everyone that we were great singers. Levi piped up that we had a whole group with us, and she said that was even better. Dookie, you take the top notes. I got the middle. And Obi, you take the bottom. We gonna start out in unison after Levi sings the first verse. After less than 10 minutes, we were ready. Levi started singing and then we broke off into a regular three-part harmony. But our voices blended together so well, even Levi glanced over at us. Mother suck. Yeah. The icing on the cake that night was that everybody found a girl. But the most important part was that we found each other. After the high we experienced at the party, we made a promise to meet at my house the next day and start really rehearsing. 
Things just fell into place. Lawrence had a musical ear like a composer and he put the harmonies together. That's when we realized how good he really was. He was born into a musical family from Georgia. As kids growing up on the North End, we'd walk by Lawrence's house and his uncles would be sitting on the porch all day playing guitar and singing. After about a week, we must have learned 10 to 12 songs of all different genres, from the four freshmen to Ray Charles. We also discovered that as much as Levi loved being the lead, he loved singing harmonies just as much. Now that is a showman. But the Beyonce don't mind standing down and letting the Michelle and or the Kelly go forward, or the Latavia. Or what's the other girl named Latanya? You know, the other girl, Fur. After rehearsing and learning new songs, we were ready to take the next step. Saturday night amateur competitions in Detroit were a big thing for artists and audiences. They gave new talent a chance to showcase their stuff and maybe even win cash money prizes. In 1954, the Warfield had the biggest amateur show in town. Our first number started out, all right, okay, you win. I'm in love with you. Then we segued into a shout chorus with a four-part harmony like a trumpet section. The audience jumped to their feet, screaming and clapping because our voices sounded like a brass section. After one more song, we ran off the stage to a standing ovation, which led to us winning the show and being approached by a slick looking guy who was clearly impressed. Hey fellas, what y'all call yourself? He said, rubbing his hands together. We're the four aims. One of us piped up with the name we had decided earlier, Shiz. Y'all are good. I think I can get you some work. What? Where? I said, jumping on it. I was aggressive when it came to business. I can get y'all into some nightclubs, he said, sizing us up. But we're too young for nightclubs. I hedged. Well, y'all looked apart. Don't you want to work, he said, already knowing the answer. Yeah. Well, we'd like to make some money, I replied, wondering where this was going. I tell you what to do, he said handing us his business card. My name is Twaz. I got a partner named Casablanca. Our agency is Twaz and Casablanca. We almost laughed. That was some funny shiz. Twaz and Casablanca. But we kept cool and just stared at the card to make sure we heard it right. We soon learned it was a real agency run by Twaz, who was the working agent, and his partner Casablanca, a pimp, who owned an after I was joint that mostly funded the agency, Paul. So I've read before that the Four Tops came into Motown, already snazzy, jazzy, okay? I've also heard before that the Four Tops had uh, touched on some pimping before they got to Motown. Now, don't forget that Motown is a Pippin agency itself. Maybe that's the reason why the rumor that the Four Tops was dibbling and dabbling in Pimpin is out there because the dude that they was affiliated with, Casablanca, was a pimp. Well, even if they was pimps, uh, Fakir ain't gonna give it to us in this goddamn book. We soon learned it was a real agency run by Twaz, who was the working agent and his partner, Casablanca, a pimp who owned an after hours joint that mostly funded the agency. Uh -huh. The agency booked acts primarily on the Chitlin circuit, a group of venues where African Americans could safely perform during the segregated pre-civil rights era. Throughout the country, there were clubs, diners, and auditoriums, juke joints, and theaters where black folks flocked to be entertained by some of the world's greatest performers, from Duke Ellington to Pearl Bailey and Little Richard. The list included nearly every performer of color, including Levi's cousin, 
Jackie Wilson. If you want to get work, Twas explained, you're going to need some pictures. We call them lobbies. And you are going to need some uniforms. I'll send the pictures to a few club owners. And as good as y'all look, I can get you some work. Child, these fools on a mission impossible because they ain't got no money to get no uh, pictures taken and or no outfit. The caper goes like this. Hey, y'all. Let's go to our family and beg them for some money, okay? Then that way we can go around there to Hot Sam's, the tailor shop or the men's shop where you go to get suits made and stuff like that, and get us some outfits, okay? They go through the door of Hot Sam's. Hot Sam, we need some suits made. Uh, do you young boys got enough money to pay me? Because these suits are going to cost you about... Uh, I, I, I. The four aims say together, oh, we got it, we got it, we good, we good. Hot Sam take his precious hot time and measure them from head to toe so that these white wool suits can come out perfect. We ain't got a lot of money, Hot Sam, but I want you to give us the most for the least. Okay, they, like I said, these gonna be some wool suits, okay, and polyester. Okay, you ain't getting no gushes, no cash of meat. Before he started making the suits, he say, okay, it's going to cost you a hundred and something dollars. The four tops say, okay, okay, let's do it. Now, boys, it's going to be a hundred and something dollars. Do you have it? Uh-huh, we got the it. four tops let this man make the suits knowing that they didn't have all the money. Child, it's the greatest group of them all. Finally, we asked Sam for the bill, which came to about $150. We had $100, which was a lot of money for us, but we still were short. I tell you what, he said, you look honest enough. I'm going to let you have them. You don't look like the kind of guys who are trying to beat me out of anything, but you are going to owe me $50 and some change. And if you don't bring me my money, I'll find your asses and I'll put you in jail. I swear on the Bible, I said, as soon as we get this money, we're going to bring it to you. Okay, so good looks do get you out of a ticket. And as far as the pictures are concerned, Dookie forgot that he had a photographer as a cousin. So that's the second problem out the way. We called Twas and he wanted to see the pictures right away. Oh man, these are great, he said. I'm about to get you all some work. About three days later, he called me. At the beginning, I was the guy out in front driving us forward, not taking no for an answer. I had the energy and the get up and go. Probably a lot of nerve, plus a dream. Twas came through with a three night gig at Eddie's Lounge in Flint, Michigan, an hour drive from Detroit. He said he'd drive us back and forth the 60 mile commute each night, pay for the gas and take a 10% Asian fee from the $200 booking. We split the rest four ways after we subtracted what we owed Hot Sam for our uniforms. We would have done the gig for nothing. The problem is people be like, oh, I just want to sing. I just want to sing. You don't want to pay your motherfucking bills too. You're going to have to do about five songs each show. And you are opening up for a shake dancer called Tequila Wallace. Ooh, I love them shake dancers. They be shaking. Remember Titty Tassel Twisting Tony from the Ed Edda James book? I ain't even never heard of a shake dancer until I read that book. Now, I love it. This was another first for us. Sexy women dancing, shaking, and stripping down to a bare minimum was the usual opening act on the chitlin' circuit. And we were well on the road. Y'all do the best you can, Twas told us, because if you do good, I got more work for you. <laughs>
so please remember to like, share the Facebook, subscribe, and visit uptopbeauty.com for our Priscilla personality frames number two. Now, remember this. The same people that you meet on the way up will always be the same people that you meet on the way down. My naysayers, my patron loves you, babies. Have a good one. Peace.